Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonfireTools.com. Industrial workbenches with integrated tool storage. And brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. And by Centromatic, industry leader in wheel balancing technology. At rockauto.com, you can find all the parts your car will ever need and at reliably low prices, including CV axles from FVP, and of course, CV stands for constant velocity. Sherry, what are some of the signs that my CV axle might be going bad? Popping and clicking when turning, clonking when accelerating, as well as growling and humming, and maybe a split or cracked CV boot. All of those things could indicate you need a new CV axle. And of course, the CV boot holds in all the grease, so when that goes, you're going to need a new CV axle. So when I choose one, why should I go onto rockauto.com and choose FVP? Easy. <laughs> they're made to match the original OE attributes, and they're designed to reduce NVH, which is noise, vibration, and harshness. You know, it's an ever-evolving world when it comes to CV axles and a lot of components on vehicles. So what are some of the things that are trending when it comes to CV axles? drive trains, especially on SUVs and crossovers because they're more powerful and complex, even more so than 10 years ago. Some OE design improvements and CV axle technology include AAR sockets that help to reduce NVH. An AAR socket is an angular adjusted roller and it accompanies the standard tripod socket design. Some European applications use an eight ball socket design. You get better strength and durability with those also, many of these applications use a flat spline design to help reduce NVH. And I know I'm talking about noise, vibration, and harshness a lot, but it's one of the biggest complaints from customers. And now, many OE axles incorporate a hollow tube design to help reduce torque steer under hard acceleration. How does it do that? So torque steer, of course, you know, is when you're doing a hard acceleration and a car pulls right or left, the hollow design, it's flexy, it's bendable, it absorbs the energy, whereas before, with one that's solid, it doesn't absorb that energy, and so you get that boom. What are some of the things I should consider when I'm buying a new CV axle? So, make sure the replacement CV axle includes all new OE quality materials, like neoprene or thermoplastic elastomer or TPE dust boots, plus stainless steel clamps. All that better protects against deformation, stretching, and corrosion. A lot of technology goes into these, so how is FVP evolving with the industry? So all FVP new premium CV axles, they follow continuous evolving OE design trends that ensure that our CV axle assemblies have the same OE properties to help restore OE performance and durability. You can be sure that axles from FVP are at the top of the heap when it comes to technology and evolution, and you can find them at rockauto.com. Vehicle engines are chock full of technology today. And you know what the common denominator is? Well, most of them use oil to get the job done. Welcome to this AMS Oil Tech Tip. It's all about the new technology. Let's start right here with VVT, Variable Valve Timing. This is pretty cool. So you can see this engine right here is a dual overhead cam, and this one actually has a variable valve timing, but it's driven by oil pressure. Check this out. I went and took one apart for you guys. You can see it right here. Now what happened, these little wipers with oil pressure are gonna move. The camshaft, well, it's connected here, and the timing's connected there. So when it moves, watch this. Bam. With oil pressure, mind you, you're going to go ahead and vary that timing. That's one technology. There's plenty more. Right here, you can see I actually have an oil driven timing or chain belt drive right here. This is actually a pressure tensioner that's going to hold tension on those belts and chains with oil pressure. You don't have oil pressure, the right pressure, man, you could jump some time and you can bend a valve, not a good thing. Another one, direct injection right here. Direct injector pump, even on gasoline direct injection, up to 3,000 to 6,000 PSI, it takes a monster amount of pressure to go ahead and push that in. Once again, oil has to lubricate that. Now you probably heard of displacement on demand. Chevy trucks use a lot of this. You can see this right here. Actually diverts the actual oil from certain lifters to cancel cylinders out so you can get better gas mileage. All of it's oil driven. You can see right here. It all started back with VTEC. VTEC actually used a big rocker arm and oil pressure to drive it. And there's our variable valve timing. Man, oil with new technology. Goes hand in hand today, doesn't it, Len? 
It is. And, and one of the things we're talking about here, we've talked, you know, we've got many, many different viscosities, but what we're looking for in this particular one, when we look at all of these different technologies, is consistency. Oil is affected by temperature, um, and it's directly related to oil pressure. And we need consistency. So building the oil properly, using the right additives, using the right base oils, most importantly, provide the consistency that you need to operate all of these different technologies the way that they're designed. And that's the key word there. If you want to make sure your car's running at optimal performance and using the technology that it has on your vehicle, well, check them out on the website at amsoil.com. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to be Motorhead of the Week, but it doesn't hurt if you are a rocket scientist either. Jeff Fox is an engineer at NASA, and he has been for 39 years. And when he's not working on real rocket ships, well, he's working on his own rocket ship at home. It's a spot-on replica of a 1967 Shelby GT500. Jeff found a genuine 67 Fastback in 2001, and he put it on a rotisserie for a complete restoration. And he tells me this car is a project that will never stop evolving. And the power plant has been through a few different iterations since he got the car. At the moment, you can find a 427 under the hood that's making about 720 horsepower. He says the engine bottom end will handle 1,500 horsepower. So stay tuned for more updates because this guy knows all about power, both in space and on the ground. He is Jeff Fox, our Motorhead of the Week. And if you or someone you know should be Motorhead of the Week, drop us a note motorheadgarage.tv and tell us why. That is also the same website you want to go to if you have a product you want to see here on our show. From our crew here at Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonfireTools.com, we'll see you next time. So long and drive safely.